Hi guys, Dave Wilson here again. Now, jeweler's shears or tin snips are an essential part of every jeweler's toolkit, but there's a lot more to these things than you might think. So, let me explain. Follow me. This is a pair of straight shears, 7 inches long or 17.5 centimetres. Now, by straight shears, I mean that the blades are straight. You can get some that have curved blades as well. When you hold them up with the handle, they should flop open. These are a little tight yet, but the idea is that they will open with gravity and so you shouldn't need to keep forcing them open with your fingers. You should only need to perform a squeezing action. This particular pair is riveted, so if they ever come loose, just a little tap with a hammer on the rivet will tighten them, but don't be tempted to over tighten them or they'll be difficult to use. Now, something that you might not know is that you can get right and left handed ones. This particular pair are right handed. Now this doesn't mean that they're designed for using in your left or right hand. What this means is that the material you are cutting goes on the right hand side of the shears. The important thing to note with the shears is that they are not scissors and they shouldn't be used as such. So for example, if you were cutting a thin strip of curd with scissors, you'd probably do it this way with the material to the left. With shears though, you need to think the opposite way around and the material goes on the right, right-handed snips, with the thin strip on the left. There are two reasons for this. Firstly, your hand will go above the sheet you're cutting and this is safer. Secondly, the small strip that you're removing will be on top and it will curl upwards and away from your hand, so again, easier and safer. Hence why these are called right-handed shears, because the material is on the right. Left-handed ones will be the mirror of this. Likewise, if you're cutting a circle, you may be tempted to go this way around, anti-clockwise. Don't. It will be difficult and it will be dangerous, as you're trying to bend upwards the large portion of the metal, the circle itself. Cutting it with the circle on the right, remember these are right-handed cutters, this will curl up the scrap section as before and it's much easier and it's much safer. This pair has rather small blades so it's designed for jewellery work but when cutting a long thin strip it's important that you don't go all the way to the end of the blades. Doing so will create a little notch in the end of the cut so only cut to about one centimetre from the end and then move and place the material back into the jaws. Repeat this action for a smooth and continuous cut. Because of the leverage, there's greater cutting power as you move closer to the pivot. So for tougher material, make a series of short cuts and keep moving the metal closer in towards the pivot. You can also move your hands backwards towards the end of the handles to get maximum leverage. If you cut in silver, gold or non-ferrous metals, they should last for years, but if they do ever need sharpening, you need to do this on an oil stone, rather like sharpening a chisel, and you need to grind this edge flat. Make sure to maintain the same handle, and under no circumstances sharpen the inner faces, as this could round off the shearing edges, and it would ruin the action. These 7 inch shears are a great little size for cutting little bits of silver sheet or for fringing solder. Just remember to keep the main part of the material on the right hand side and you'll get a safe, clean cut with minimal effort. So, there you go. There's a lot more to jeweller's shears than perhaps you first thought. I've been Dave Wilson. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video. Bye for now.